guys. So in the attempt to, not in the attempt, in the striving to provide more content, one of your fellow subscribers has provided me with a new piece of equipment that I can use to help provide you guys with some cool content. I don't know how much we're actually gonna use it for the channel, but it's a nice device so I can see things on my edges that I couldn't see before. Now, you guys know I had the macro lenses for the iPhone, and one of the problems, one of the limitations was you can only get in so close on uh, macros. So what we have here is the Carson E-Flex 75 by 300 digital microscope with a flexible neck. So what this is, is it's a device, I can hook this to my computer. I, you guys have all seen USB microscopes and I didn't realize how much better it was going to be. Now it, it is unwieldy and it's jiggly, uh, but that's to be expected, it's on a, it's on a neck. Uh, so I played with it a little bit today and I wanted to just show you some vi pictures of what I have done on edges. Uh, so I took a handful of my knives, I took this, it will be the first image you see, is the edge, and I did something to this. It doesn't want to deploy like it did. It's 100% my fault. Uh, I dropped it, and I think I may have knocked the detent ball in and caused a little divot that I'm gonna have to work the rest of the way out, because it's got a, a spot where it feels rough. And that's 100% my fault. Um, but at any rate, what it allows me to do is I can zoom in and I can look at those edges. So the first thing you're gonna see is the edge on this. And then, so I'll put that up in a minute, and I'll put the, I can't get a video capture to work where I can send it to myself. So we'll, we'll have to play around with that, we'll see. Um, and I can't email this stuff to myself, so basically I'm using my sister's Facebook uh, messenger, thanks sis, as a surrogate. I can send it to her directly from my computer and send it to myself. So there's, there's some, to put it in a video, there are some issues, uh, unless I send up a tripod and I take a video of the screen, which which really isn't the cleanest. but. So let's let's take a look here. We'll flip this around. Um, I'm gonna actually the first thing you're gonna see is a picture of my fingerprint ridge detail, and then I took one of my hairs and laid it across my fingerprint just so you can get a scale reference. So we can see because it doesn't look like when you look at it, you're like, oh yeah, that's 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 not that that's small. That's not that fine. But when you put it in perspective, when you look at it in comparison to the reference pictures I took, which were of like I said, my fingerprint and uh, uh, fingerprint ridge pattern, which is tiny. You guys will see it's, it's huge in this picture. And then a hair, which is, my hair is super fine. Uh, it's just like my daughter's. It's really, really fine, really thin. So those are the perspective pictures. And then the next picture, well, uh, you know, I'll, I'll narrate into it. It will be this. And so we'll talk about each blade. Keep in mind though, these edges have been used. This is just um, me playing around and getting used to this. These edges have been used. There's adhesive on them. There's some chipping but uh, it's a good point of reference. I can see what my edges look like at the apex and see my micro serration pattern going up, which is something that was a point of contention with Jim Skelton. And I, brought, I, I pointed out to him, so this is a way for me to demonstrate that my micro serrations do go all the way to the edge. They're not burnished off. And you can see a little bit of a tooth to that. So, all right, let's stop. I'm gonna load up some of these pictures and then we will, uh, we'll, finish the edit and I'll get this loaded. I am gonna try and do something. I don't know how it's gonna work. I'm gonna try and do a video uh, and I'm gonna do it as a premiere so you guys will get an announcement as to when it's gonna load, when it's finished, that it's coming, and then as soon as it loads, it will premiere. So I'm trying to do some stuff with the channel. I, I don't want to just continue to, to do things the same way. I mean, I don't want my, ch my channel will never be super refined and super finished, but at any rate, this is just things that allow me to do a little bit better content. So, without further ado, let's take a pause. We'll look at the reference picture first, and then we'll come back and talk about what we're gonna look at next. So guys, you can see that that is tiny. That is a human hair across the ridge detail of my finger. So that's just a little perspective. All right guys, like I said, what you saw in that picture was uh, head hair across my fingerprint and the, the micro, you know, the, the uh, ridge detail on my fingertips. So they're huge in that picture so that gives you a point of perspective so you kind of know what we're looking at so the very next image you're going to see is the actual factory edge on this knife and i want you to remember that we does an incredibly good job with their factory edges and it's even more impressive if they were able to get a good factory edge a good edge on a karambit because they're hard to sharpen because you're using a belt and a wheel 
so you have to use a small contact wheel to get in there so it's you know it, it's kind of impressive that their edge came out this good so let's take a look at their edge and then we'll see um, some of the other edges that I did so like I said guys the edge that we puts on their knives is always pretty good. I mean, it's really good. It's one of the best I've seen. Really consistent, but you can see this is a very coarse edge in comparison to what you're going to see on the future knives. All right. So that was the factory edge on that. So what I, with the next picture you're going to see, and you can tell it's this one, um, I, this has an 8,000 grit edge. And I'm not going to lie to you, this is the this knife, for some reason, has always, the L-Max on it, just gets frighteningly sharp. It bites. It bites. And I think that's because I've kept this at around 8,000 grit. Um, it is a, a not, for this steel, that's about the prime point for this. Now, you will see that there's some scratches going the other direction. This knife's been used a lot. I have, uh, I've actually worn some of the ceramic off of it. Any of you guys that have knives that I've uh, done ceramic for you, you know that that's, uh, it's pretty robust. So the fact that I'm taking some of the ceramic off by using it, uh, I should tell you, it cuts cardboard. I did all that leather cutting. Um, so you'll see some you'll see some scratches that aren't going with the scratch pattern. But that scratch pattern, what you're seeing is the when I was talking about it, the scratch pattern is not going heel to tip. It's not going this way, which is what happens when you use a wicked edge. A wicked edge, you are using, basically, you clamp it in and you start from the heel and you work your way to the tip. Well, that's fine if you're working your way from heel to tip going this direction. So what you wind up with is stria that go this way. And if you use a wicked edge, you wind up with stria that go this way just because you're doing a stropping stroke. You, I imagine you could try to go tip to heel, but that would be, it's unwieldy and it's uncomfortable. It, it's, it's more of a, you know, this is the way it was designed to go. The blade sits. Now, if you put the blade in this way, you could probably do it, but be smacking up against the tip, things like that. So what Jim was saying about the wicked edge, I 100% agree. It has a lot of serious limitations. Um, and I just don't like the edges you get with them. Coffee's done. Sorry about that. So, yeah, it's it's 100% um, the way you would cut. I have a guy that, that keeps commenting. He's a butcher. He cuts this way. I was like, that's great. I, I appreciate that. I can probably do it that way if you really wanted it that way. You know, but for him, a wicked edge would be great because... I don't know if you know, a lot of butchers push cut, they push away from themselves, but 99% of the people are not going to be push cutting like this from like into things. They're going to be draw cutting for cutting off cardboard, uh, cutting rope, cutting line, things like that. That's the way, that's the natural way you're going to cut the average person. So the stria you're about to see, they are going this direction which acts like a, a unidirectional saw blade. I've said that before. So let's take a look at 8,000 grit. You're gonna see, as fine as this edge looks in person, there's some serious grooves cut in that from those stones. So let's take a look. So like I said, guys, you can really see the deeper scratch pattern in this knife than you can in the other one. Uh, the scratches that you're seeing that all go from the left side of the screen to the right side, that is my main bevel. What you're seeing are some other scratches that go the other way. That is because I have used this knife a lot. It works really great for cutting cardboard and things like that, and it winds up getting some push cutting done. Now, this knife, I did not get very good pictures. It was good enough for me to see what was on it. I would love to have shown you. I just couldn't, uh, the way this knife uh, is finished, the, the refraction that you get on it is uh, a lot different. Um, and I couldn't get a good clear picture, but I do know that I've used this knife a lot lately and I felt bad taking it and showing it to people at the show because I didn't think it represented what I do, but there's, there's a lot of chipping. This knife's been used a lot. There's some chipping there and there, and I could see that and it looks massive on here. But when you, when you take this edge and you look at it in the light, I'm not even seeing any reflection. So that's, I didn't, I didn't get the clear picture of what I want to show you. I wanted to show you what the edges look like after you use them. But I think you're going to see some of it in the last one and then this next one, which is a 10,000 grit edge on my Ferrum Forge Maker's Choice Spinner. Now, this knife is probably one of the sharpest Ferrum Forge knives I've got. I take all the Ferrum Forge knives that they make to 10,000. I take all of my personal ones to 10,000. Um, 
so, so you can kind of see. And what you're gonna be seeing is, like I said, you'll see that clear stria pattern. Even though it's super, super fine, you still have that unidirectional saw blade pattern, kind of the teeth that are doing the work, that are doing the cutting. Um, and I, I actually, this is the only Fire and Forge knife I have that has cut me numerous times. It is that freakishly, frighteningly sharp. Um, it got me right here. Um, it got me right here on my finger. I got the tip of it right into my, right at the, <laughs> the, um, the nail bed and went all the way up to the knuckle, pretty much clear to the bone. And it was 100% my fault. I had put it in my pocket. Um, the material, the pants I was wearing, got down and pulled the tip open when I reached in my pocket. I just jammed the tip of that knife into my finger. Uh, but this is probably because of the, the thinness of the blade and just the edge geometry that this knife has, probably one of the sharpest, it is the sharpest ferrum forge I've got. Now, like I said, you can't get sharper than a razor, but it's that refined, pattern. It's, it's the way things cut and the sliciness when I say something sharper than something else, because it really isn't. Any knife that leaves my house, they're all the same sharpness, just different levels of refinement. But when you get into something that is really thin and it just bites at the slightest, slightest touch, it, it can be it can be frightening. This one uh, this one still gets pocket time, but I'm weary of carrying this one every once in a while. It, it bites, it's a biter. So guys, you can see the refinement on this edge. Now, it's this by far is the finest edge of the ones you've seen. Um, but it, it is really fine, but it is so sharp. Uh, you can see the striation in comparison to my uh, ridge pattern on my fingers. So, But you can still see that those micro striations go all the way to the edge. So like I said, guys, um, the weather has been crappy. The sun is actually out, but it has been raining so hard and so bad that I thought this would be a good idea. It's not a waste of my time. I don't want to try and drive up to the shop in all this weather and, and, and stuff like that. And I truly don't have anything to work on because the stuff that people have prepaid for, um, I've got an issue with a couple of the blanks for the Hornets that I've got, I've got to work out um, with the people that did the double disc grind because they're not flat. Uh, they have a dip in them and I'm thinking about getting in touch with them, see if I can send them back and see if we can't reflatten them just a little bit. Um, and the other one is uh, I, ha I have stuff that people want and stuff that people have told me they get pre-ordered or they, but they I haven't gotten payment come through yet. So I think today's just gonna be a content heavy day. I'm probably just gonna do a bunch of videos. I'm gonna try and do a video about that Aaron Frederick Smatch It. And I have a knife in from a guy that got my num my phone number from PBK that wants some, um, that wanted a 12,000 grit on a Dwayne Dwyer. It's a gorgeous knife. I'm not a fan of the SMF. Ah, you know, but here's the thing. It's, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful, it's full custom. And I put a 12,000 grit edge on it and we'll probably take a look at that later today. But guys, that's, that's it. I just, like I said, I wanted to do a little bit of uh, original new content, stuff you guys haven't seen. Um, I did the thing of cutting leather, but this is a way for me to, to show you on a, on a scale that, that is a little bit easier to put things into reference as to what these edges look like. Uh, like I said, um, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and get this video to uh, to Jim Skelton and, and let him see it. So you know, the things that we are seeing right now are definitely, you know, he's been reviewing knives and had a YouTube channel a lot longer than I am. So anytime I'm given a bit of good advice, and I know some people don't like him, but the fact is, he gave me good advice at the show off camera about things that I could do. You know, demonstrating things and you know speak to the limitations of things. And I, it was, it made me so happy when he's like, people need to listen to you. So uh, it, it's, it's pretty awesome. So yeah, guys, that's it for this video. I'm gonna try and do some unique stuff uh, with the editing, not necessarily editing, but how things start and how things premiere and how things debut. Uh, I kinda, I've been having a hard time. I can't get stuff loaded to Patreon the way I want. It does not want to take the links and things like that. So. Guys, it's not that I don't want to put stuff up early for the Patreons. That's something cool. But the Patreon was never supposed to be a platform for for new, for for new its own content. So basically, if you're Patreon, I apologize if you're not getting early content, like I had said. But it's just not, the platform's not wanting to work with me. Uh, they've had some, some problems and they are starting to demonetize and take away people's accounts. So I don't want to raise too much of a stink. So that's it, guys. That's the end of it. We will... Uh, 
reconvene on this videos later today. Uh, and like I said, I'm gonna have more content that comes up. Uh, I forgot to put my hat on for this entire video. Sorry guys. All right, take it easy and I'll see you later today.